Hello everyone, this is Ted Bauman, uh, editor of the Bauman Letter here at Banyan Hill Publishing. Uh, I'm today here with my colleague Michael Carr, uh, and we're going to be talking about uh, the current state of the stock market, namely the volatility that we're seeing, uh, and whether that indicates the need to start adopting more defensive positions, and if so, uh, what those strategies should be. Michael, how are you doing? Great, Ted. How are you? No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, I've actually got a bit of a defensive strategy on my desk right here. I've got a little bit of money. I saw that. I thought, well, this is actually one thing a lot of people are doing. You were telling me just now that uh, a, a large proportion of American households are starting to hoard cash. How, how, how did you find out about that? The Drudge Report, which is, of course, an excellent source for headlines, uh, Drudge is saying that 20% of Americans are starting to hoard cash. And just varied reasons, maybe a constitutional crisis, maybe worries of a recession, lots of things coming together to increase volatility right now, as you note it. Right. Now, uh, I think the question of volatility is an interesting one because volatility has been around. I mean, just before we came on to the, to the call, we were talking about volatility during the time of the impeachment of Andrew Johnson, which happened after the Civil War. Uh, so volatility is nothing new in the stock market. What is new is that we have all these computerized trading programs that uh, react when certain triggers are reached. And it seems like they're reaching triggers uh, on a daily basis. And so they, they pile in and out of stocks without really any, any reason. The question is, what's the long-term trend, Michael? Uh, which way is the market going? I think your first point about the volatility is driven a large part by the quantitative hedge funds. You recall 1998 when the hedge funds said we had an eight sigma day. And what was unusual was we had multiple eight sigma days. Now that's an eight standard deviation day. It's expected to happen once every billion years. And it happened three times in one week. Volatility begets volatility the way these funds are working. So the long-term trend, I think, is now less relevant to a lot of funds. And that's a big shift in the market. Nobody's focused on value. Well, not nobody. Quite a few of the funds are not looking at value. They're simply looking at what's moving and trying to buy it. Right. Now, let's talk about that for a second, because that goes to the question of what uh, our viewers should be doing in, in the context like this. Um, you trade options, uh, uh, which is something that you can do on the short term, but a lot of us, people like myself and Charles Mizrahi and uh, Jeff Yassi and others, uh, you know, buy and hold. Um, how should one be approaching a portfolio in an environment like this? I've always thought we're all right. We <laughs> all have our philosophies. They all work together. We always hear about the importance of diversification. And I think most people hear the wrong thing when they hear diversification. They think they should own 25 to 2,000 stocks and be broadly diversified. I think what diversification really benefits the investor with is use multiple strategies. Use something for the short term. Use an aggressive approach combined with a defensive approach. Add some value. Have four or five different strategies rather than just dozens of stocks that use the same strategy. Well, absolutely. You right. do. Yes, that's right. I, I, you know, in the, um, in the Bauman letter strategy, we try to uh, essentially come up with a, an approach that allows us to uh, rely on steady long-term gainers um, that produce high dividend income. Uh, but in addition, we have, uh, you know, some stocks that, that we expect to see uh, some more volatility. The real question, though, I think, is a lot of people, when they see this volatility, they, they think I should be selling. Uh, whereas you get people like some of our colleagues, and I, I tend to agree with them, people like Paul Mampilli, who say, don't sell. Uh, Charles Mizrahi says the same thing. Don't sell because you bought a company. You didn't just buy you know, a squiggly line. You, you bought a company. And if you think that company has good profit prospects, why would you want to sell it? How would you react to that? Yeah, I would tell a story, of course. So when I go to a football game, and football being a universal term that globally applies to an event in a big stadium, I plan my exit as I'm parking. I always park very near to an exit so that I don't get caught behind 10,000 other cars. And I think the same applies to the stock market. Plan your exit before your buy. And if your exit is triggered, you're out whether the market's going up or down. 
but just planning your exit, sticking with your strategy, that's the key to managing volatility, in my opinion. So there you have it. The basic message is have a plan and stick to it. And I think that's uh, sound advice because uh, there are many different ways to, to invest and to manage one's investment. Um, but the key thing is not to put all of your eggs in one basket, not to put all of your investment into one strategy or another. Have a couple of different strategies, uh, including potentially holding cash, other things, um, holding companies that have long-term value, even if they have a short-term dip, uh, playing the options market. So the key thing is uh, uh, pursuing different kinds of investment strategies is the way to survive a volatile situation. So there you have it. The best way to be defensive is to be uh, offensive when it comes to adopting uh, trading strategies. So there you have it for us for this week. Uh, enjoy your week and uh, uh, some of our colleagues will be talking to you next Saturday. Thank you. Goodbye.